Hey guys, it's Chen here at Bad Fest. Stay tuned for the A review. funny world, you know. I think we maybe have graduated from the bedroom, but maybe not, you know. I mean, keep it real. Keep doing it in your bedroom. Yeah. Um, I mean, the bedroom's just the easier, easier way to do it. It's, yeah. I don't really know what I'm saying there. Um, I learned in my research that Elton John is like a mentor to you guys. Yeah. How did that come about? Like our uncle, I guess. Um, how, does it, how did your music get into his hands? Um, he bought the record, um, that Sam produced with us, Sam produced with us, called Pinal Pinal um, back in 2008, I think, around 07, 08, around then. And he bought it at Virgin Megastore, which doesn't exist anymore in Sydney. Uh, he loved it so much, he went back and bought 20 more copies. Had dinner that night with Tony Collette, oh, who we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't know, but we collectively know. Well, no. Um, and he said, I won't swear, but he said he really liked this. Man, Welcome to swear. Pronounce it, and she said, "We'll either say pronounce it, and then passed on our agent's number, who passed on my number, and then Elton called me the next morning. So and I then just got a phone call saying, Hello, hello it's Elton, and I won't impersonate him because I can't do a very good job anyway. And then that was the moment, I guess, when our lives completely shifted. Um, how so? Because you guys had already put out a fair bit of music from then. Was it like a yeah. confidence boost, or like what was it? I mean, it's a different thing growing up in Australia." Uh, and similarly in a rural place or whatever it doesn't matter the world is that place way over the other side of the planet to have someone give you the keys to that world yeah. I mean it's Elton he can speak to anyone in the world yeah. It, yeah it gives you a confidence boost it means that your dreams actually can have no limit yeah. you know which after doing it we'd already been doing it 25 30 years we were in our late 30 late 20s rather okay um so we knew that dreams did have a limit, and then you meet Elton, and you go, actually, he just blew the ceiling off it all again. Yeah. And we moved to London, we tried all sorts of, sorts of things, Empire came out around the same time, and that all happened, and it's been crazy. We made now with Elton, and then um, it's just gone on and on. It's such, a, it's just like a mind-blowing friendship in my mind. Like, who would have thought that Elton John was like... Hanging out for now. I'm just like amazing. Um, let's talk Chenga. Um, how did you find Kira for this? Maybe you should tell me, Kira. Okay. Oh, uh, well, we have a mutual acquaintance. His name is Todd Simon. He's a horn player, trumpet, I believe, yeah. and based in LA. So I believe they were, you guys were looking for vocalists, and uh, he reached out to me. He said, "Hey, there's a group looking for vocalists. I think you would fit right in." What do you think? I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. And I went to the session, and the rest is kind of history. It kind of just yeah, snowballed. Yeah, it's true. So we'd written a song with Lindsay Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. Okay. And um, we wanted a gospel choir and a three-part thing. So we got three girls in, through yeah. Todd, a trumpet player, and uh, Kira was one of the girls. We listened back to the recordings, and there was something extraordinary about it. We called each girl back in individually. Oh. But the third one we called back in was Kira. <laughs> And well, now we have lots of hit records and we have Kira on tour. She's the star of your life. I mean, well, it just goes on and on and on. But. Is she the secret ingredient, I think? It's not so secret. It's not so secret. I mean, she's right here, ladies and gentlemen. Kira, you don't say we'll blow her out. Um, and Jenga, it, were, were you guys experimenting with Jenga while you were writing it? Just want to I mean, tell me more you know, about we've, that. We've always experimented um, musically and then obviously psychedelically. You know, as a yeah. ch small child, I was taking a lot of LSD, you know, okay. as a way of informing my consciousness, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a good, good thing to do maybe when you're a little older, but um, it certainly influenced our understanding of the world. But yeah, Chunga is something we came to later in life. Um, and it, yeah, that, that last record and this 
new one, which we're just sort of finishing the, putting the finishing touches on. It comes from that universe okay. of, of universal love and understanding and joy and bliss and smiling so much it hurts your face, you don't know what you're going to do. That That's kind of such a great thing to share with like the universe because it's such a depressing time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we could share Changa with the universe, <laughs> we wouldn't have Trump. We wouldn't have all these horrific people and horrific things happening. Mm-hmm. Let's just start our own country where it's oh. completely legal and we'll just like everyone we have bliss, you know. Planet Pinal. <laughs> Planet Pinal, sign me up. I will join. It'll be like Noah's Ark, but Pinal style. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys dropped solid gold. Uh, last week was it May second? How's that been? How's the reception? It's been unbelievable. We've had like 1.5 million streams or so. It's crazy. It's crazy. This is the first song we've written with Kira. This yeah. is, this is, we penned this together. This is a very momentous occasion. There's another singer on the record by the name of Marquise Tolliver, who's an incredible violinist and singer. This is a very special record for us um, and. To really be Kira's debut as a writer, Thank artist, you. you know, this is a whole another level for us. Yeah, how's it for you, Kira? Honestly, it's somewhat surreal, and I'm just excited by the positive feedback we've been getting so far. It's it's really it's just exciting. I mean, I'm really at a loss of words. I'm just so happy to be here and continuing to get to perform it. Now that it's released, it's kind of this is the first show that. We're doing it, and it's out in the world. Yeah, this, this so the this is like, time. yeah. No, so now this show, like Forbes, we're starting another level of the journey that I've been taking with them. So I'm not. This show is going to be really exciting um, because the song just came out, you know. Yeah. And we have been performing it before, but now some yeah, of the we debuted it at Splendor on the Grass, yeah, yeah. but it was a slightly different version. And now we have the. It's out. So it's and now audiences can sing along because they know it. They have yeah, access they to it. it. Right. Yeah, they can understand the lyrics to this one. <laughs> That is the thing with some of your songs. I find a lot of them, I'm like, you just like, do you guys just like throw shit at the wall and like see what sticks? Or like, how does it happen? Absolutely that. You can kind of tell that, right? <laughs> but I'm into that style. It's great. Um, so you touched on it before. You're putting finishing touches on a, on a new body of work. New album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically finished, yeah. Oh, exciting. And do we have a release date? We never know that never stuff. Know. <laughs> they probably did tell us at a meeting, but they change it all the time. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else is coming up for you guys then? Anything that you can tease? Well, we have a couple more shows. Yeah, yeah, we got some shows coming out. There's a couple other albums coming out for my project Two Leaves project. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. unsuccessful yeah, project. Yeah. Pick it up. <laughs> um, Two Leaves, everyone. Um, Sam has his other band, Peking Duck. They're putting out some songs, probably. And then, um, yeah, there's always stuff going on. Beautiful. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This has been a lot of fun. And best of luck with your performance tonight. You too. Thanks for having us. Woo! Woo! Woo!